Looking to rev up your portfolio? High-end collectible cars might be the perfect investment to drive up your returns. Check out this baby. A 1954 Mercedes-Benz race car sold for a record $30 million in July. This is the highest price ever paid for a car at a public auction. Can you believe that? So, how do you turn your hobby into a money-making machine? Joining me now, automotive analyst and car coach, Lauren Fix. And I just want to tell our audience, we've got a really long delay to Buffalo here, so it's going to be a little slow back and forth, but we'll make it work. I've been looking forward to this segment all day long. So, Lauren, I know you were involved in this marketplace. Thank are, you. are we too late? It sounds like all the big deals have been done. No, there's a constant uh, evolution of vehicles. One of the things you'll note is at some point Chevys are high and maybe Corvettes dip down. And so the idea is you need to follow the market just like you would any stock, any bond, any you know type of investment. You want to monitor that. And the better you're into that market, the more you learn, the more powerful your decisions can be. Now, the dirty little secret here is that you are in this market. You will know a lot about it, right? So why didn't you get involved? Have you made a lot of money there? Yes. Is, it, is it tough to make money? Uh, we are heavily involved in the marketplace. I've been involved <laughs> in the auto industry for over 30 years, so without giving away all the dates. Um, I choose cars that I personally like so that you don't feel that a buyer's remorse when the market dips. Many years ago, my father bought a Ferrari at the top of the market, but he tried to sell it at the bottom of the market. So that's why one of the things you want to do is monitor the market. Certain cars are going really strong right now. Older Ferraris, 60s Ferraris, Ford GTs are super strong. Shelby Mustangs are very strong. Corvettes. So the, if you're going to buy that car, you need to get a deal on that car. So buying it from an auction house, you'll probably pay too high. Buying it from a broker, you might pay too much. You almost <laughs> want to find a private person to do that. So that's where that homework is so critical so that when you do go to purchase that car, you make a good choice and you don't get hurt. So, Lauren, you keep saying, do your homework, do your homework, read in, read in. What do I read? Where do I look for this information? Okay, there's a couple great websites. Number one, Haggerty.com. You can look at the sports car market letter. If you're looking at race cars, there's all kinds of websites for that as well. The Keith Barrett Jackson auction, you can follow them. You got Russo and Steel, RM auctions. All these auctions will show a trend. Just to give you an idea, uh, I was at the whole week of Concord d'Elegance and, and Monterey, and we were at five different auction houses. They sold over 760 cars for over $300 million. That'll tell you how many people are getting into this marketplace. There's nothing like driving your own investment. <laughs> So it seems to me, though, that it's got to be pretty complicated. Sure, it's fun, but can you get involved at a, at a decent level? I mean, do you have mm -hmm. to put down $100,000 to start playing? No, I mean, that'll put you into a whole different category. You can purchase a... A car may be in the $30,000, $30,000 range. Maybe you prefer a Mustang of the 60s, something you really wanted as a kid in high school, a 65 Mustang. You can pick up a 65 Mustang in the $20,000 range. The key is to pick the right one. You want the right engine. You want the right options. You want the car to be right. You want to make sure it wasn't in an accident. And if it was restored, huh. it was restored properly. If you can find an original car, that's the way to buy them because they're only original once. <laughs> That's a great point. So how do I make sure that the car is in good condition mm -hmm. and that it's, you know, it's never been in an accident? Those, those would be big issues. Right. There are certified appraisers and experts out there that you can hire and they'll go look at a car. Maybe you've got a neighbor down the street who's got, you know, an old Corvette sitting in the garage. And you, is this the car I want? Do I want to invest in a 69 Corvette? Well, it depends on the engine. It depends on the condition. So you have to get an expert to go and look at it. Yes, you'll pay them, but it's just like having your car checked when you buy a used car. That will actually pay All off right. in the big picture that you're taking your investment very wisely and taking the precautions because if you buy that car and there's problems, you could be stuck with a car that has a lot of issues oh, or a bad history. Terrible. That would be terrible because you would have invested in it. What are the mistakes? That, that would be bad. That'd be bad. What are the mistakes mm -hmm. that people make when they're getting involved for the first time? I think they, they buy cars 
uh, on impulse. You know, they know someone's got an MG. Well, those cars have got to be worth some money without doing their research. And they'll buy a car and it'll sit in the garage and they can't get rid of it. Or the restoration of that vehicle is substantially more than the value of that vehicle will ever be. I see that a lot where people will buy a car, they'll invest. You know, thirty thousand dollars into it, and they can't get out of it. Or they purchase a kit car, thinking it's a real car, or it's got a lot of replacement parts. Or multiple people claim to own that car because it's been in a couple accidents, like a vintage uh, race car that that's happened a couple times. All right, you talked about some big deals out there and sales at very high prices. But how mm -hmm. does this investment compare to anything else? I mean, what kinds of levels of appreciation does the market have? Oh, it's huge. Right now, you're looking at Ferraris. They're up quite a bit. Mercedes, Porsches are up right now. Um, if you look at the market as a whole, they're up about 430% investment over gold, which is somewhere around, I uh, have 270%. Uh, so, I mean, when you're looking at those type of numbers, that's where you really got to check something like Haggerty, where they have their blue chip listing, and you can follow the car that you want. You put the car in. There's 25 cars that Haggerty lists that they suggest. Those aren't necessarily cars you want. Maybe you can't afford those, but they do list other cars. Sports Car Market Letter does the same thing. And there's also uh, websites that monitor all the auctions so that you can do your homework. Really, the secret is to talk to your friends, get on the forums, start getting involved with the clubs. Finding a, hey, if you can find a BMW 507 that's sitting in somebody's garage and hasn't moved, that would be a deal, no matter what condition it's in. Wow. I have to tell you, if I spent that much on a car, I don't know that I could ever actually mm -hmm. drive it anywhere. Lauren, thanks for coming on the show tonight. Great job. Oh, yeah. I, think, I think we all learned it. something about this. I think my husband's at Thank home taking notes is what's going on. Thank you.